seriously guys, working at Subway was probably one of the most easiest jobs out there. I don't know why I'm about to complain about it to you guys. We got free cookies. And you know the comic with the subways in hell? I was actually working at Subway when I made that comic. I just think it adds sort of a little bit of value to it. You see, the owners, who are husband and wife, can you believe it, of the subway I worked at owned two stores. One of the subway stores was in a Walmart on an Indian reservation, because we have those in Arizona, and the other subway was the subway I worked at. And since the Walmart store was always busy, the owners would spend 99% of their time at that store. So I didn't really have a boss most of the time. On the off chance the owners did show up, they would just pick up some food and then they would make sure I was making sandwiches the right way. And every time I made a sandwich in front of them, they would always find something wrong with it without fail. You put on too many olives. Do you know according to the subway formula, you're only supposed to put on eight olives on a foot long? Eight! One for every other bite. That's just ridiculous. Can you imagine someone just counting out eight olives? Nobody does that. I usually worked the closing shift, and at the end of the night, we would turn the alarm and we have 60 seconds to get out of the store. But one time I had the opening shift, so I unlocked the door to get in with my key, and the alarm went beep, beep, meaning I had 60 seconds to turn it off. No big deal, right? I've turned the alarm on all the time when I was closing. So I go to the little control panel, and I type in the code, and nothing happens. The beeping is still there, and the clock is still ticking down. So I go, okay, I'm gonna press each button very carefully. I'm gonna make sure each button makes a beep when I press it. Beep, beep, beep. Nothing still happens. So I go, okay, I'm gonna make sure to press each button very carefully. And I start thinking, did they change the passcode without telling me? Well, this is the only passcode I know, so we're just gonna try it again. And I press each button very carefully. Beep. 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 And it goes quiet. And then the alarm goes off. I still had like 20 seconds left. But I guess when you get it wrong three times, it automatically assumes that you're a burglar. So while the alarm is going off, I look on the contact sheet for the owner's cell phone number. I step outside, I call him, and he doesn't pick up. So I go back inside, find the number for the other Subway store. They open an hour before we do. Someone picks up with their stupid voice. Oh, thank you for calling Subway. I'm blah, 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 blah. How may I help you? And I go, hey, is Mike there? That's not his real name, guys. Don't worry. And they go, um, just a minute. Yeah, sure. I have all the time in the world. The cops might be on their way, but take your time. So Mike picks up. Yellow. Hey, Mike, this is James. Uh, what's the passcode for the alarm? Who is this? It's James. What's the passcode? What are you doing there, James? Why aren't you answering the question? I have the opening shift. Is the alarm going off? Yeah, no one told me the new code. Yeah, we changed it. It's the last four digits of your social security number. Oh, okay. Thanks, Mike. I don't know my social security number. So I finally get the alarm off. No one showed up, thankfully. Which I actually don't know if that's a good thing or not, now that I say it out loud. We did have a store manager who would like make the schedule and sometimes tell us, hey, can you guys do a better job at your job? But other than that, she was cool. She watches my videos and so do her little brothers. They're big fans. Shout out to Ivan and Andy. Those are the brothers. So get this, at Subway, you only work with one other person. Just you and them in an empty Subway for five hours. I mean, we weren't like empty all the time. Okay. And when you're not making sandwiches, you have other stuff to do, like stocking the chips or we had stuff to do. But okay, we did watch a lot of Netflix and do homework. So I mean, it was <laughs> that other person you worked with would make or break your entire shift. It wasn't the annoying customers. I kind of got used to annoying customers. So I worked with a lot of crappy people. And I also worked with a lot of people who I would probably never become friends with except in a work setting. You see, you got to understand the type of people who got jobs at Subway. Potheads. Most of them are potheads. And some of them are really cool. I'm just gonna go over a couple of the characters that I worked with. There was Tyler. I freaking love this guy. He smoked a lot of weed. He actually taught me what vaping was, and he got me into Clash of Clans. I actually mentioned him and his girlfriend in my Riddles video. I don't know if I ever told him that. And of course, I have to mention Corey. He was cool. We watched How to Get Away with Murder on Netflix, and I've also hung out with him outside of work. What him and Tyler had in common is that they would actually do their job, which you gotta appreciate. Then there was this guy get this, who was also named Jared, and he was fat. I know, right? He's like Jared b before. He loved Marvel, and that's like the only thing he would talk about. I can say these things. He doesn't watch my videos. There was Sarah. She was cool. She made me a bread bowl. And her boyfriend, Jay, he talked about chakras and third eyes. He was interesting. And also, there's Anthony. He's cool. What's up, Anthony? For the 100,000 sprinkles video, I actually went back to Subway to use their scale because I knew they had one. And we counted 500 sprinkles again just to be more accurate for the 100,000. And Anthony helped me count instead of working. I mean, at least he got paid 
minimum wage for it. So two more stories before I go. One time, Jared asked me to take out this pile of trash, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll just put this pile of trash in the dumpster. And as I was taking it out, I saw that there was a chip poster in the pile, and I thought, this is too cool to throw away. I'm going to keep it. So I took it home with me. And then the next day when I went in, people were saying, oh, where's the chip poster? We can't find the chip poster. We, ha we haven't seen it anywhere. And I'm thinking, I have the poster. I decided not to tell anyone that I had the poster. And it's still hanging up in my room. Sorry, boss, if you're finding out about this now. Okay, and then the other story, I was working with a manager and we were just making sandwiches like usual. And I noticed that when we toasted a sandwich, it would burn the paper a little on the edges. That probably shouldn't be happening. So then a customer asks for just bacon toasted. And the boss lady puts some bacon on paper and then puts it in the toaster. And we don't have a setting for just bacon. So then when she opens the toaster, there was a fire on the bacon. So then she starts to whack it with the little metal tray thing, but all she ended up doing was fanning the flames, making the fire bigger. <laughs> uh, you got this, right? Then I went in the back and I got the fire extinguisher and I actually used it. I single-handedly saved that subway. Wait, what have I done? Is it okay if the bacon's a little crispy and has nitrogen and carbon dioxide stuff on it? Like sometimes people would ask me, can I have a turkey with lettuce, tomatoes? Whoa, 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 slow down. What kind of bread? Foot long or six inch? What kind of cheese? Is it toasted? Then we'll talk about vegetables. And every time someone brought in a list, there would always be something missing on it. Always. I never had someone come in with a complete list. I would ask someone, what kind of cheese? And they would say, ah, they didn't specify. Well then, if they didn't care enough to remember cheese, I guess they'll get Swiss. If anyone watching is currently working at a subway, then feel free to use these tricks. If someone asked me, hmm. What kind of cheese do you recommend? I would always say provolone, because it's the easiest cheese to pull apart with gloves on. Really, if anyone asked me what I recommended, I would just tell them the easiest thing for me to do. But even after I gave my insightful provolone cheese recommendation, sometimes people would still say, Mmm, I'll take American. Why do you even ask me what cheese I would recommend if you're not going to take it seriously? Another thing that would annoy me is when people would say the sandwich was all done, but they didn't put any sauce on it. So I would ask, any sauce? And then they would be like, oh yeah, mayonnaise. Oh, why did you tell me it was all done if it wasn't? Also, the receipt machine at the store took like seven seconds to print out the receipt. So it would be very awkward every time I would ask people, do you want your receipt? And then they would say yes, and then we would just stare at each other until... The receipt printed. So what I did every time someone swiped their credit card, I would just stare off into space, and in my head I would count to five. And then I would ask, do you want your receipt? And by the time they said yes, it was like magic. As soon as they said yes, the receipt printed. At Subway, you only work with one other person. So if someone got annoyed and said, let me talk to your manager, I would just look at them and go, listen, I've been here the longest. The only other person in this store is a 16-year-old girl, and she technically isn't old enough to use a toaster, so I'm probably your best bet. I'm the manager. Like, do people think the manager will automatically take their side and give them free stuff? Yes, actually they do think that because it happens all the time. I would consider myself a pretty laid-back Subway employee. I didn't like to be stingy with people, even though I was disobeying the Subway formula on purpose. Oh, you want more than six olives on your foot long? Pfft, sure. Here, have a fifth slice of cheese. A dollar fifty for avocado? Pfft. I'll charge you 75 cents, buddy. I probably shouldn't be saying these things. You know, in case this whole YouTube thing flops and I need a job. So I wasn't really strict on the rules. You know those fast food workers who are strict? No, we won't serve breakfast at 10.02. Get out. But being pretty laid back still didn't stop people from being annoying. So this one person comes in and asks for two foot-long pastrami sandwiches. And pastrami is our most expensive sandwich. It's about $10 for a foot-long. And guys, the pastrami is super good. But I wouldn't pay for it. I mean, it's good, yeah, but I'm not paying 10 dollars for a foot long. It's not worth it. So this guy, I make his two sandwiches, I ring him up and I say, that'll be $20. And I guess he didn't look at the price of the sandwich on the menu, or he thought we still did the $5 foot longs, because he said to me, I ain't paying for that. And this is when I was just starting out. I only had like a week of experience. And after he said that, I responded, well, shoot. I guess you're not paying for it. I didn't know people could do that. Hey, I want this. All right, that's $20. Nah, you don't want it? No, I want it. I'm just not paying for it. Okay, no, but actually we did come up with a compromise. He told me that he had $12, so he ended up paying for one of the sandwiches and I got to eat the other one. So it all worked out. This one time I was making a sandwich for a guy with a very heavy accent, and he asks for onions on the side. No big deal. We at Suabue put vegetables in little cups all the time. I actually got a soup cup because the on the side cups are teeny tiny, and I start doing my thing, but then he says, no, on the side. And I think, oh, he's getting a foot long. He probably wants onions on half of it, but not the other. 
So I start putting onions on half the sub, but then again he says, no, on the side. At this point, I don't know what this guy wants. So I ask him, on the side of what? And then he screams, onions! And I never figured out what he was trying to say. This one old gentleman asks for sauce to be put on his vegetables, and normally we put it on top of the sandwich with the meat. And I didn't know if I heard him correctly because I put the sauce on and then I closed the sandwich. So your sauce would have been in the same place either way. One time this woman tipped me and Corey $40. She wasn't annoying, I just want to sprinkle in some good customer stories. Okay, one time this uh, Native American person came in, and I don't know if mentioning that was important to the story. He comes in and asks for five foot long tunas. Okay, Tyler, just me and you, let's do this. And then when we're all finished, we ring him up and we say, anything else? And he says, seven meatballs. What? He wanted seven more sandwiches. But James, you're Suabway. You're supposed to make people sandwiches regardless of how many they ask for. Yeah, I know, but the guy could have handled it differently. Normally for a platter, you have to call in at least an hour ahead. And that's only five foot longs. This guy could have called ahead and said, Hey, I'm getting 12 sandwiches, so just prepare yourselves. Mentally. I mean, we had so many customers waiting in line. No, we didn't. That's a lie. It was only him. But still, this one woman that was making her sandwich and for vegetables, she asked for extra lettuce. So I put on a big handful, but then she asks for more. So I put more on, more, and sprinkle some on, more! Uh, I won't be able to close the sandwich with any more lettuce. And she says, that's fine. All right, extra lettuce it is. So I ended up giving her an open sandwich with a mountain of lettuce. Y you know we do salads, right? When I was little, I, I always thought if I was working at a store and someone tried to rob me, I wouldn't give them any money. But now it's like, Psh, I ain't risking my life for Suabway. Here, take the cash register. So thankfully, I've never had anyone pull a gun on me, but I have caught people stealing from us. I was making someone's sandwich, and this one kid asks for just a water cup, so I gave it to him. So I go back to making a sandwich, and I just hear the fuzzy soda sounds being dispensed. And I look over and the kid is putting soda in the cup. He didn't even try to hide it. When I put soda in a water cup, I at least wait for the employees to go in the back. But I didn't even say anything. I was just like, all right, man. This guy, I totally saw him take a bag of chips and he hid it under the counter so I couldn't see. So when I rang up his sandwich, I asked, anything else? And he said, nope. All right, whatever. Okay, last story. I was in the back and I was playing some Clash of Clans and we have a computer that shows what the cameras see and I see this woman who was eating there. She reached over the counter and took three large cups and I did nothing to stop it. You know, I'm the kind of person that's like the fast food employee is always right. Say if I was eating somewhere and I asked for a chicken salad and they said, we only have tuna salad. I'm the kind of person that's like, oh, well, I guess I'm having the tuna salad then. I think people need to realize that these fast food workers are, are actually people and not something for you to use to get a free sandwich. But it turns out the employee making my sandwich was a huge idiot! As I was waiting in line, I noticed my favorite sandwich, the Turkey Italiano, wasn't on the menu. The Turkey Italiano, by the way, is the same as the Italian BMT, but instead of ham, you put on turkey. Very simple change. I asked the worker, did you guys have the Turkey Italiano? And he said, no. So then I asked, can I get a BMT, but instead of ham, I have turkey? And you know what he said to me? He said, no. I don't think I'm asking for too much. At my Suaboy, the BMT and the Turkey Italiano were the same price, okay? And what do you mean, no, you can't put on turkey? Who, who's stopping you? I know for a fact that you don't count the slices of turkey at the end of the night. Just hook me up, please. I'm feeling sad. So I just got the BMT with all the vegetables because it's more food for the same amount of money and I was a poor college student. And also because screw that guy. Have fun trying to close that sandwich. But then when he was all done, he put my sandwich by the cat cash register, and then he just started helping the next customer, and they hadn't even started making their sandwich, just ring me up so I can leave, and then help the next person, but no, I had to wait for him to finish this person's sandwich. If I wasn't so nice, I would have just took the sandwich and walked off, but I didn't because I'm so nice. I've realized telling you that story, it sounds like I'm one of those customers who complain about everything and say, let me talk to your manager. But really the whole time I just stood there awkwardly. But I think I can complain a little bit. I used to work at a Suabway. I know how things are supposed to work. Suabway, if you're somehow watching this, you need to hire more people like me. Speaking of me, when I was working at Suabway, I never liked wearing my name tag because when I was making people sandwiches, I hated it when complete strangers would say, thanks, James. How did you know? Oh, right, the name tag. So I never wore my name tag. I just work at Suabway, okay? We don't need to know each other on a first name basis. Just take your food. For some reason, I don't like it when strangers know my name.
but now that's, that's all thrown out the window. This one time a customer came in and for some reason I couldn't help but feel like I'd seen her somewhere before. Her face was so familiar, but I couldn't put my finger on it. So I made her sandwich, I rang her up, she paid for it, and as she grabbed her stuff she said, Yeah, I'm going up to my father's funeral this weekend. After my mother died, he couldn't last that long. Oh, that's why I remember her! She came in last week telling me the same story! What? What are you supposed to say to that? Yeah, that really sucks. I'm just some underpaid sandwich artist with really bad people skills. Did she really not have anyone else to talk to? That just makes it extra sad. I ended up giving her a free cookie. I'm just kidding. No, I didn't. Luckily, my coworker Corey heard this and he talked to her and he was very nice. Corey's a lot better at being nice to people. One time I was closing the store, I turned off the open sign and I was opening the front door to bring in the table and chair from outside. But while I was bringing in the table, these two old guys got out of their car and asked, are you guys closed? Yep is what I would have said if I wasn't so nice. Instead I said, Ugh, fine. Even though it was past 10, I let them order their sandwiches. When they came in, the 16 year old girl I was working with was not happy. They started apologizing for coming in so late. Oh, I didn't realize places in Arizona close so early. Blah, 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 we're vampires. And I said, Ugh, it's whatever, just order your sandwiches. And then he said, can I have three salads? And I actually laughed. <laughs> But he didn't laugh. Oh, you're being serious. I let you in past closing and you want three salads? Do you know how many dirty dishes that'll make? As I was making this guy's three salads and 16 year old girl was making the other guy's two foot long sandwiches, a third guy not associated with these two came in. Guess he didn't see the open sign not illuminated. I finished helping the two old guys and then I started helping the third guy and he asked, what time do you guys close? 15 minutes ago. But after everything was said and done, the two old guys tipped us $5 and the third guy tipped us $1. So I mean, between me and the 16 year old girl, a $3 tip ain't so bad. I actually heard from one of my old coworkers that the husband and wife owners of my old Suabway watched my two other Suabway videos. So they might be watching this one. And I just wanted to say that by letting those three guys in, I showed initiative and was looking out for customer satisfaction. Yeah. One time I brought a laser pointer into work because I knew I'd be bored and I was. Except the boy I was working with was shining it outside at the cars driving by and I told him not to do that because it's probably stupid illegal and really dangerous. Later I was going to go clean the bathrooms. I saw the laser pointer on the counter and I said, Hey dude, while I'm cleaning the bathrooms, don't shine the laser pointer at the cars. I told him that. When I was all finished cleaning though, I saw him sitting by the window just shining the laser at the cars. At first I wanted to go up to him and say, Dude, stop. But then the other part of me thought, I'm not this kid's dad. I told him to stop twice and he didn't listen. Whatever happens is his problem. He ended up getting fired. Yeah, a lady came in and said, let me talk to your manager. And I said, uh, I can give you her phone number. And boom, he, he got fired. I know I'm the one who brought in the laser pointer, but I don't really blame myself for him losing his job. That was a stupid thing for you to do, kid. Once again, I was the good employee. I mean, I didn't show that much initiative that time, though. So before I worked at Suabway, I liked to go to this taco place and get the same thing every time, the carne asada fries. Later, I learned that the carne asada fries are 2,000 calories. That was the only thing I ever got at this taco place. And I used to be super self-conscious, thinking, Man, these employees must think I'm so weird coming in getting the same thing over and over. But then when I worked at Suabway, I learned, ha! Nope! Fast food employees don't care about you or your order. Unless you're mean to them or tell them that you're going to your dad's funeral, fast food employees will not remember you. One time someone came in and told me, I'll have the usual. And I said, I've literally never seen you before in my entire life. I didn't really say that. If any of you are working at a really slow Suabway, here are some fun games for you to play. Cut up a loaf of bread into small pieces and make a mini sandwich with one meat and three different vegetables. Give it to your coworker and have them eat it without looking. Then they have to guess what's on the sandwich. And that's it. You can set up a point system like they get one point for every ingredient they get right. Also, you can do the same game by mixing up two sodas and have them guess. You can walk into the freezer and see how long you can last. My record's an hour. You can bring in some vanilla ice cream and just make all sorts of stuff with that. You can make root beer floats. You could take two cookies and put ice cream between them and make a cookie ice cream sandwich. 16 year old girl made this thing. I think it was called the kazuki. You put cookie dough in a bowl and then you cooked it, but not all the way. And then you put ice cream on top of it and it was super good. You can make nachos and bread bowls and we wasted a lot of food. I still don't know why that guy didn't give me a turkey italiano. I mean, at my Suabway, we made bread bowls and nachos. It was five minutes until closing and we get a phone call on the Suabway phone. I pick it up and say, <sighs> Thank you for calling Suabway, how may I help you? I was supposed to say, this is James, how may I help you? But I wasn't about to tell this random stranger my name. <laughs> 
idiot. Anyway, the other person on the line said, Hey, what time do you guys close? In five minutes? Is it alright if I show up late? I just need gas. And being the good employee that I was, I was totally willing to make this guy's sandwich over the phone, let him pick it up after we closed, and then I wouldn't ring him up and just pocket the money. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. That's a crime. Please don't sue me. So I said, yeah, I can do that. What kind of sandwich do you want? And he said, I just need gas. Oh, don't worry, sir. This sandwich will give you plenty of gas. Uh, I, I mean, do you want chips or something? No, he said. I just need gas. I was a little confused. Okay, yes. So you'll get gas. Then are you going to stop by and pick up a sandwich? And he said, I don't want a sandwich. And then it hit me. Even though the first thing I ever said to this guy was, thank you for calling Suabway, I think he thought he was talking to a gas station. So I said, sir, this is a Suabway? Oh. And I never got the chance to tell him that gas pumps don't close. You see, the Suabway I used to work at closed down. And I am so deeply upset at this news that the only way for me to cope is to make one last video about it. So this story happened a couple of years after I quit working at Suabway. I was behind on a video, so that meant I was in a mentally damaging mindset called crunch mode, and I had been working all day, and I started getting hungry, and I still hadn't taken floof on a walk, so I decided to kill two birds with one stone and eat floof. J just kidding, I decided to take floof on a walk to my local Suabway. And before I entered the store, I picked up floof and held her in my arms, cause I'm not a psychopath. I know taking your dog into a restaurant is tacky and a health code violation, but this is a Suabway we're talking about. I know how laid back it is here. There are no rules or health codes. One time when I was working at my Suabway, this 10 year old kid came in wearing a swimsuit and literally nothing else. And he was unsupervised. He didn't want a sandwich, all he wanted was a cookie, but this kid wasn't wearing shoes or a shirt. The two things you need to get service at a restaurant. So did I tell this shirtless delinquent to get lost? No, he had money, so I did business with him. I don't discriminate against shirtless people. Look, his mom was probably at the grocery store next door, and he just got done with swimming lessons, and he said something like, mother. I would be most grateful if you let me consume a pastry with high levels of sugar and simple carbohydrates. And his mom probably said, yeah, whatever, nerd, go get something at Suabway. So the point of this story is to let you know that I was the kind of employee who, as long as you were willing to pay for your food, didn't care what you were wearing or what health code you were violating. This is a gosh darn Suabway. So I walk in with Floof, and it's completely empty, by the way. Seems like I'm the only one in this town that even likes Suabway. And the worker, aka the only other person in the store said, is that a service animal? Floof's not a service animal. Unless the service you want is someone to chew up all your stuff and bark at everyone. But she still emotionally supports me when I tell her, I'm gonna die alone. She tries to make me feel better by licking the inside of my nose. But I didn't want to lie to this guy about Floof's emotional support status, because if I said yes and he said prove it, I would be in trouble. So like the emotionally stable enough to not need a dog person that I am, I said, uh, no. And he said, she can't be in here. If the health inspector came in, they would fire me on the spot. Which like, geez, dude, you're gonna let the health inspector treat you like that? Stand up for yourself once in a while. So I said, okay, I'll leave. Yeah, there are other restaurants in walking distance, Suabway guy. The ramen place lets me order with floof in my arms all the time. I know this because I've already been there twice this week, and the only reason I'm even getting Suabway is because I don't want the ramen employees thinking that I'm a weird guy who brings my non-emotional support dog everywhere. You missed out, Suabway. Do you know who I am? I used to work here. And then the guy called my bluff. He said, wait, we can make it fast. As fast as Jimmy John's? This kid's standing up for himself. I'm proud of him. I knew exactly what to tell him. I want a foot-long ham sandwich on Italian bread with American cheese. I know that's the hardest cheese to pull apart with gloves on, but whatever. He sped run putting on the meat and cheese, and then he asked me, what kind of vegetables? And in my mind, I went, hold on. You didn't ask me if I wanted it toasted. I see what you're doing. You're trying to get this sandwich finished as quickly as possible, so you're not even going to ask me if I want it toasted and hope I forgot. Well, it's okay, because I didn't want it toasted, but I'm on to you. And then Floof jumped over the counter, peed on the olives, and bit the guy in the jugular. And then licked the inside of his nose. <sighs> Some people take their job way too seriously. 
Well, at least some subway workers are more laid back like me. Like this one time not too long ago, I went back to the subway I used to work at, and I didn't recognize any of the people there. But someone did get recognized in that store. Me. One of the workers said, Are you the guy that made the cartoon about working here? And I said, Yeah. And then I decided to make his job interesting by telling him, Hey kid, this is the place. What? This is where it all happened, kid. These floors are the very same floors that I used to mop. You missed a spot over there. And this kid lost all six of his olives. Okay, I don't use my fame to get into places I'm not supposed to. Usually. But this kid was so excited, and I used to work here, so I asked him, Can I go in the back? Which is probably breaking a bajillion health code violations, but this kid didn't care, he let me in. It had been three years since I had been back there, and literally nothing had changed. I don't know if any of you have ever moved out of your parents' house and then three years later you went back to visit and saw your childhood bedroom, but it was that sort of feeling. The chip boxes were still in the same place, inside the freezer all the food was pretty much where I left it, and the bulletin board had all the same papers. One of the papers was a list of all the employees with their names and phone numbers, and that list was so old that it still had all of my old co-workers' names and numbers, and it even had my own name and number still on the sheet. It had been crossed out, but I still went, ah, and I punched it out with a pencil. Maybe that's how my phone number got leaked. And then I thought, I wonder if the other number is still here. In the very back of the room, there was this desk, and I got down on the gross, unmopped floor, and I scooted underneath the desk, and... Oh my gosh, it's still here. When I used to work there, one of my coworkers found this store's Wi-Fi password and wrote it down on the bottom side of the desk so then everyone could watch Netflix instead of work. <laughs> and the employee had no idea it was there and he typed it into his phone and it still worked. All right, don't tell people that I told you this, I said. We can't let anyone know this secret. But then the place closed down, so now no one can get in trouble. Anyways, I'm gonna miss that place. It was gross and I didn't love working there, but... In the end, it was the most memorable job I had as a teenager, as it was the only other job that I had. It formed a good work ethic, I made new friends, and I even got to eat free food sometimes. But now I might get sued for this video, so we'll see what happens. So now, every time I walk into Suabwe with my non-service animal, a little part of me will be sad that my old Suabwe is in ruins.